Okay, so in this problem, they tell us that we have a flywheel with a radius of 0.3 meters. And they also tell us that we start at rest. So what that means is our initial angular velocity is going to be zero because we are not moving. Next, they tell us that we have a constant angular acceleration of 0.6 radians per second squared. So 0.6. Next, they ask us to find the tangential acceleration. So this formula is equal to your acceleration, your angular acceleration times your radius. And we know that this value is constant and this value is constant. Both of these values are constant. So this is going to also be a constant throughout this whole problem. So we can plug that in 0.6 radians per second squared times 0.3 meters. We get a value of 0.18 radian meters per second squared. And radians is a measure of an angle, so we can cancel that out. So we just have meters per second squared. Our tangential is equal to 0.18. So that's how you do that part. I'm gonna erase this really quick. All right, next, so we're gonna do our radial acceleration. So this formula is our velocity squared times our radius. So we have this value. It's zero squared times radius. Zero squared times anything is zero. So this is just zero. And that's how you do that problem right there. That's meters per second squared. Next. We're going to calculate our resultant vector. This is equal to the square root of our tangential acceleration squared plus our radial acceleration squared. We calculated both of these values before I erased them, so now we're just going to plug them in. So our resultant is equal to the square root of 0.18 squared plus zero squared. We got those values from when we calculated before. So zero squared, that doesn't need to be there. So I'm just gonna loop. Next, 0.18 squared inside of a square root, that just cancels out. So we are just left with 0.18 meters per second squared. Yes, that is an 8. 0.18 meters per second squared. So that's how you do that one. I'm going to erase this and move on to part B. All right, next. So we're going to calculate the tangential again. Hint, hint. I told you it was going to be constant. So it's going to be the same thing. Acceleration times radius. That didn't change. 0 0.6 didn't change. 0 0.3 didn't change. So it's just 0.18 meters per second squared. It's that comp that's easy. So that's going to stay the same, like I said. So next, we're going to calculate the radial acceleration. Remember, this is equal to our final angular velocity squared times our radius. So ask yourself, what is our final angular velocity when we reach an angle of 60 degrees or pi over 3 radians? So we need to solve for this value. We're going to use this kinematic equation right here. Since we have all of the other values, we have acceleration, we have delta theta, and we have our angular velocity at the initial. So we solve for this, plug in our values. This is zero, so this goes away. So now we're just left with two times our acceleration, which is 0.6 times 
times our delta theta, 0.3. I'm going to plug this in the calculator, and we get a value of 1.25. So I did square root both sides to solve for this because I know I can just plug that in right here because it's already being squared. So final angular velocity squared is equal to 1.25. So 1.25 times our radius times 0.3. So we get a value of 0.38 meters per second squared. That's the value we get after we calculate this times that by 0.3 times our radius. This is our answer for our radial acceleration at 60 degrees. All right, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. So our resultant acceleration is still that same formula. Tangential squared plus our radial squared so that's going to be 0.18 squared plus 0.38 squared plug this in the calculator and we should get a value of 0.42 meters per second squared i'm going to go ahead and erase this and let's do the last part 120 degrees part c all right, so for the last part, they tell us after it has turned through 120 degrees. So 120 degrees is in the second quadrant, probably about like right there. That's also the same as 2 pi over 3 radians. So 2 pi over 3 radians, that's how much our angle changed in this case. Last time it was 60, now it's 120. So delta theta is 2 pi over 3 radians. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. They want us to find the tangential. Like I said, that doesn't change. 0. 0.6 times 0. 0.3. That's 0. 0.18 meters per second squared. Told you that was going to be constant throughout the whole video. So, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Next. Radial. I said that was... Final angular velocity squared times your radius. We got to find that value. All right, so we got to find that value, and this value is equal to initial squared plus 2 times acceleration times delta theta. Now plug in our values. We know this one's 0 like it was last time, so I'm going to just go ahead and erase that. 2 times acceleration times delta theta. That is 2 times 0. 0.6 times, now it's 2 pi over 3. Plug that in the calculator, 2.5. So now we have 2.5. We're going to times that by our radius, which is 0. 0.3. 2.5 times 0. 0.3 is equal to 0. 0.75. So 0. 0.75 meters per second squared. That is our radial acceleration. 0.75 meters per second squared. I'm going to go ahead and erase this and we're going to do the last part. But lastly, our resultant vector is the sum of our other vectors squared. So we have 0.18 squared plus 0.75 squared, 0.77 meters per second squared, and that's how you do this problem. If you need more help, let me know.